everyone, this is Sue. Welcome back to my channel, Beauty Book Corner. Today I thought I would do another haul video. This is going to be my Black Friday, um, Cyber Monday slash just book buying binge haul, I guess. Um, I kind of went crazy in the month of November and I just purchased so many books. It was really bad. I am officially, officially on a no book buy because I just cannot buy anymore. Um, it's just insane. I don't even know how I'm going to get through all these books, but let's just jump into it. So the first book I got was from Barnes and Noble and it was the Harry Potter, a journey through a history of magic. And I saw this just browsing through Barnes and Noble, uh, I think the last month or so. And I absolutely loved it. Aspects that she pulled from real historical, um, I guess information and put them in her book. So for example, this is the divination book and or divination section of the book and it kind of goes through um, you know, Professor Trelawney as a professor of divination, but then through that she kind of goes through other characters in history that have been known for divination. Um, and it just seems really, really interesting. It goes through palmistry, um, the significance of red eyes, um, the snake charmer in history. Um, you can see there's a little um, medieval insert there, manuscript insert of the snake charmer. So just some really, really interesting things and I absolutely loved it. I believe there is an actual exhib exhibition at a museum in Britain right now, but obviously I'm sadly here so I can't go there. And also the UK edition supposedly has some extra information in that book. And then I made a huge purchase on Book Outlet and I am a little sad. I got it today, so I that's why I decided to sit down and do this video. But last time I purchased seven books from Book Outlet and they came in pristine. Today I think I purchased 14 books and um, and then I made a separate order for like three other books I think. So that's going to come later. But I want to show the 14 today. But when it came in the mail it, or when it came to my doorstop, it was like I don't know, the sides of the box were like torn up and I was just like, oh my gosh. And so one of the books is a little damaged on the side. Um, and so I was a little disappointed by that. So I think if you're ever gonna purchase a book outlet, maybe don't go too crazy because if they're gonna try to shove everything in a box, it's gonna be way too heavy and it just gets messed up during the um, delivery process. The first one I got is this Neil Gaiman Stardust and I have read only one book of Neil Gaiman's before and it was The Ocean at the End of the Lane. I think that one just came out recently. I have my review on Goodreads already but I did not like that book so much. I felt like it was good and I feel like the more you read it you learn to appreciate different things about it. Everyone I've talked to in person and that I've read on reviews um, have said that Stardust is one of their favorite Neil Gaiman books and so I figured I would try it out and I picked it up. I have no idea what it's about but if you've read it and you like it let me know. So this one is one I saw all over Barnes & Noble last year. It's called The Miniaturist by Jessie Burton. So the story of an 18 year old girl named Nella. She goes, this takes place in Amsterdam in 1686 and she gets, um, she ends up marrying a merchant trader and as kind of a wedding gift he gives her like this beautiful, what is it? Oh, it's like a repl replica of their home, like a cabinet sized replica of their home created by this miniaturist. And then she sees, I think, like weird things in the miniature, like the home replica. I'm not exactly sure, but things about that. And then um, it starts to get kind of dark and some dangerous things kind of happen. And then she starts to see maybe there's more to this miniaturist than meets the eye. And, well, and I am a sucker for um, historical novels set a lot earlier, um, like 1700s, 1800s. I know a lot of historical novels that people read um, these days tend to be World War II um, pieces, but I really like ones a lot earlier. So this one is called The Midnight Witch uh, by Paula Braxton. Anything that has a witch on the cover, I'm gonna wanna read it. So this story is, again, it's a historical fiction. It's, well, set in the past, I guess. So in the time of dukes and lords and things like that. So her name is Lady Lilith Montgomery. She is the daughter of the Duke of Radnor. And she's supposedly like the most beautiful woman in London, very eligible and um, just perfect 
for marriage, at least back in that time. She herself is a witch and um, I guess her whole family is. And then when her father dies, I'm just reading off the back. When her father dies, um, she is supposed to take over the role of head witch of the Lazarus Coven or her coven. She ends up falling in love with this guy and he is not a nobleman and he is just an artist. He's not a witch. He's not a member of her class or anything like that. And she's also supposedly um, had a long time um, engagement from childhood with a close friend. So there's a lot of different things. I, it feels like there's going to be a lot of magic or, you know, just that whole atmosphere of witches and a coven and sorcerers and also a lot of romance because I absolutely love like historical romances. And so um, I thought that this combined all of that good stuff. So yeah. next is the Startlight Wood New Fairy Tales. This is an anthology of, I guess, um, modern fantasy authors, I guess, doing their retellings of fairy tales. New generation of critically acclaimed award-winning writers have taken up their mantle and shaped traditional and extraordinary fairy tales into something startling and electrifying. And that just sounds amazing. Uh, one of the biggest reasons why I picked this was because Naomi Novik is one of the writers in this story. She con contributes one, and I think she's the one that does the last one, I think. But um, I absolutely love her. I loved um, Uprooted, and I just want more of her writing. She has done like a whole like fantasy series of dragons in the Nap Napoleon War times, but there's like 10 bucks of those and I don't want to start a series that's that long. I loved her writing in Uprooted and I just loved the story as well. And I really like these darker fairy tales, which I feel like this is what it's going to be. And this one doesn't have a dust jacket. This just kind of comes in a book like this. And I really love the spine. So beautiful. Next one is Duels and Deception by the author of Love, Lies and Spies, Cindy Anstey. Anstey, yes. Um, this one, again, it kind of has that historical feel to it. Um, it takes place in London, I think, also. Um, it's about Miss Lydia Whitfield, heiress to the family fortune. Um, and she will run the family estate until she marries a man of her late father's choosing. She is kidnapped and her, um, I guess, young law clerk, so it's kind of like your um, attorney or your business person um, is kidnapped along with her and someone is after her fortune. They want to destroy her reputation to take that fortune from her. So it just seems like it's going to be very, very fun and fast paced and just really good. So I'm a big fan of the author Georgia Heyer and I've read almost all of her Regency romance books and they're just so funny, very um, Jane Austen-ish but with just with a lot more comical twist to it, uh, not so much social commentary. She used to write it back I think in the 20s but um, I really love her and this seemed like it'd be kind of similar to that, just a little bit more lighthearted. The next book is The Gallery. This is the one that was a little damaged, which kind of makes me really sad because this cover is just so beautiful. You can see all of that got ripped up um, and it's pretty dented, at least um, the covers here. So I was really disappointed, but you know what? I felt like the other ones are in pretty good condition. And just by judging this material, looking at the the paper that's been used, it's a very stiff paper. So I could see that why this would kind of rip very easily or at least um, show marks very easily. So I decided it's fine. Inspired by real life events and set in the roaring 20s. It's about this woman who is kind of very eccentric. She hasn't left her room. Her husband just kind of employs a big staff to take Take care of her the story of this family and kind of uncovering the secrets and I'm wondering if because the synopsis kind of points out the footman if the footman is going to be the narrator I don't know um, if you've read this before please let me know how you liked it all of these books I've kind of checked on Goodreads to make sure that they were getting a pretty decent rating and that they were kind of um, books that I thought I would be really interested in. So the next book is The Forbidden Wish by Jessica Corey. And this is an Aladdin retelling, as you can see by the cover. And this one is a little bit different because it's a bit of a twist. Aladdin is still Aladdin, but she, the main character, is the genie. So instead of being the princess, Zara is actually the genie. And that is all I know about it. And that's all I kind of want to know about it, just because I feel like too much information is going to kind of ruin this book for me. I, I think this is kind of be 
um, the genie falling in love with Aladdin. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. All right. The next one is one that I have really high hopes for because the synopsis sounds amazing. And that is the is When the Moon Was Ours by Anne-Marie Mc. McLemore. It's kind of hard to explain what the book is about, so I'm just going to read um, the synopsis. I think it is supposed to be somewhat of a romance because it is between two people. To everyone who knows them, best friends, Meal and Sam, are as strange as they are inseparable. Roses grow out of Meal's wrists, and rumors say that she spilled out of a water tower when she was five. Sam is known for the moons he paints and hangs in the trees, and for how little anyone knows about his life before he moved to the town. But as odd as everyone can Sisters, Meal and Sam, even they stay away from the Bonner sisters or Bonner girls, four beautiful sisters rumored to be witches. Now they want the roses that grow from Meal's skin, convinced that their scent can make anyone fall in love, and they're willing to use every secret Meal has fought to protect to make sure she gives them up. So I really like that. That seems like really good. I think there's going to be a romance between Meal and Sam, which I'm all for. I love romance in my books. Um, there's witches who are either dangerous good or bad we don't know yet and that seems really interesting roses moons sure give me that that just all sounds really really intriguing the next one is Tara Mafi's Furthermore and this one seems like it's going to be a really really good book uh, it's a middle grade book but I have never read anything from Tara Mafi before and I know a lot of people really like her so I thought that um, this would be really interesting this is the story of Alice who has absolutely no color and I believe believe um, her father is missing. So he disappeared from Farrenwood uh, with nothing but a ruler in his pocket and she, Alice, is determined to find him. So she decides to travel through the dangerous land of Furthermore and her companion is a boy named Oliver who is an experienced guide with his own tangled secrets. It will take all of Alice's wits to make it through Furthermore and hold fast to the magic of love in the face of uncertainty and loss. What I thought was really interesting is that the main character does not have any magic and color in a world that's full of magic and color and I I just think that that's really interesting. As you can see from the cover, she is all black and white. So the next one is The Queen of Blood um, by Sarah Beth Durst. And this is um, book one in the Queens of Renthea series. And this one, I think people were saying is very, um, it's kind of like an epic fantasy where um, there are these spirits in the land that are that want to get rid of humans and the only person that kind of protects the people is the queen, but because the queen is the queen and she is in a very uh, vulnerable situation, there are young women who are trained to fight and protect. So this is the story between Delena, who is a quiet academic, academy student um, who knows that she's going to have no like um, she has no direct line to the throne basically but she does want to see justice done she wants to right the wrongs of the land and there's a disgraced champion then who is a male who spent his um life in exile. Delena and Ven kind of join forces to kind of fight um, what's going on in this land and to protect them. I love it when it they infuse authors infuse like magic within nature so i really liked that and i just think that this is gonna be really good the next one i have is vasa in the night by sarah porter and i just love love this cover and this is kind of like a modern take on a russian folk tale Vasilisa the Beautiful. Sorry I'm probably butchering that name but i really really love like russian slavic folk tales um anything with like Baba Yaga, the bear, you know, all of that stuff. So I really, really like it. This is an urban fantasy, so it takes place in Brooklyn. Um, and the main character is Vasa, and she is a working class um, member of society. And um, basically, it's kind of about her family. And I think her family has a lot of magic in it still. Um, she it says Vasa has a bit of luck hidden in her pocket, a gift from her dead mother. Erg is a tough talking wooden doll with sticky fingers and a bottomless stomach and a ferocious cunning. With Erg's help, Vasa just might be able to break the witch's curse and free her from Brooklyn neighborhood. Lee Bardugo was the author that gave the quote in the back and she wrote, bizarre, beautiful, and richly imagined. Um, Sarah Porter reads a dark, thoroughly modern fairy tale crackling with wit and magical mayhem that would make Baba Yaga proud. And I love books that have Baba Yaga in this. This is Against the Darkening Sky by Lauren B. Davis. Um, I don't know too much about this one. I think it's something about um, 
it's like a historical novel. It's set in 17th century England. The main character, Wilona, is the lone survivor of a plague that wiped out her people. She stumbles out of the moors into a new life in the village of Ad Geffren. There she is apprenticed to Tolt, a rever revered healer in Cirrus. There she, underneath this person, she kind of blossoms, becomes her own. She is hoping to one day take her place. Um, but as an outsider, she is viewed with suspicion by all except Margon, a warrior in the Lord's Hall. So. Um, a new king arrives proclaiming Christian religion is the religion of the land. And also this cover is just gorgeous. It's paperback, but it has this like beautiful, like almost metallic sheen to it. And the back also, like the synopsis is like silver. I don't know. I just really like that. Next is a book that I think had really mixed reviews and it's supposed to be very, very dense. It's almost like a historical novel written by a historian. I think he is actually like a historian or like a professor of history and I'm, I'm fine with that because I was a history major but um, this is The Last Days of Magic by Mark Tompkins and it's supposed to be all set in the time of like Celtic history, Celtic folklore, fairy tales. It says, what became of magic in the world? Who needed to do away with it? And for what reasons? Drawing on myth, legend, fairy tales, and biblical mysteries, the last days of magic brilliantly imagines imagines answers to these questions, sweeping us back to a world where humans and magical beings coexist as they had for centuries. Aisling, a goddess in human form, was born to rule both dominions and her twin, Anya, uh, to unite the Celts with the powerful fairies of the Middle Kingdom. But within medieval Ireland, interests are divided. Both England and Rome have a stake in driving magic from the Emerald Isle. Jordan, the Vatican commander, given the task of vanquishing the remnants of otherworldly creatures from a disenchanted Europe, has built a career on such plots. So again, you're having this clash of Christianity and the native folklore and magic that is going on in that land. And so I just thought that was really, again, really fascinating to me. Also, it's set in Ireland and I love Ireland. That is like my dream vacation. I've always grown up loving Ireland. I don't know why. I just had this weird obsession with Ireland and I just loved like Celtic uh, folklore and all the fairies and the druids and all that kind of stuff. It just seems like, again, I'm really into that nature magic in story settings and Ireland has a lot of those kind of stories. Again, I just felt like I would take a risk in getting it because A, I love Ireland. I love that Celtic history um, and also that clash of magic and also I'm okay with historical novels as well as being a history major back in college I am okay with that and I thought I would still enjoy it so we'll see though it does seem like it's going to be a pretty dense book so the last book I got is Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay and I absolutely love this cover so beautiful and this is supposed to be kind of a very dark retelling of Jane Eyre she's abused by her cousins at a young age and then she ends up murdering them and she leaves the corpses behind goes to London and kind of spends years nervous and just um, like a fugitive. She's on the run, basically. She very low profile, that kind of thing. Later, she hears, she sees an advertisement that her aunt has died, I think, and then that the house, her childhood home, uh, went up for sale and it has a new master now. The new master is looking for a governess um, for his nine-year-old ward. And she goes there and she ends up meeting him and his name is Mr. Thornfield, Charles Thornfield, and he has a butler whose name is Mr. Sadar Singh. And um, it seems like their relationship is very dark and almost violent. And for some reason, she ends up kind of falling in love with the master, Mr. Thornfield, and slowly uncovering the relationship he has between his butler, like what exactly is it? Why does it seem so dark? At the same time, um, trying to protect her own secrets. And of course, this book is about all those secrets coming to life. We'll see. I don't think it's gonna be as moving and as impactful as the original story, obviously. That's why Jane Eyre is a classic, but um, I'm all up for a retelling like this. I just thought it would be really, really cool and kind of uh, moody and perfect for winter time, as well as being a pretty fast read. That is my book haul. I know I had so many books this time. Thank you so much for sticking with me if you watched this whole thing. If you've read any of these books, please leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of them. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye!